Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Um, so welcome to the Firestore uh, web app code lab. Um, so in the next 90 minutes, what we want to do is build an app, a web app, that is built on top of Firestore. Before we get into it, um, my name is Asa Thompson. I work in developer relations for Firebase. Uh, so we're going to talk about Firebase, and we're going to talk about Cloud Firestore. And then we're going to get into the actual code lab. So Firebase is, a, is Google's mobile app platform. And basically, it's allowing you to build mobile apps. And when we say mobile, we mean Android, iOS, and web. So if there's a Firebase feature, our goal is to bring that feature to all these three platforms and allow you to build your apps on top of them, and then also to grow your business based on Firebase. So this is a quick overview of some of the services that Firebase contains. So some of you already know what Firebase is and have used Firebase for some time and have problems using Firebase as well. Um, but for those of you that don't know about Firebase, it's a whole suite of products, and we build them, and we, we talk about them in two separate uh, buckets. So one bucket or pillar would be to build your app. So these are the services that you use to like, get your app going, to go from zero to actually having an application. And in this case, I'm highlighting authentication here. And this is the key uh, type of feature that Firebase is trying to provide. So you, as app developers, or developers in general, you want to build things that make your users give your users delight. You want to surprise your users. You want to make them feel good when they use your applications. I'm not sure that there are many users who are going to be very happy if you have great authentication. Like, no user is going to uh, give you a review and say, the authentication was fabulous, right? You might look at your peers and say, I appreciate the smoothness of your authentication, but really and truly, your users don't care about this type of thing. And so we don't want you to spend a lot of time focused on this type of thing. Our goal is to make this easy for you to do so that you can focus on the other things, the, the, the virtual, uh, sorry, the machine learning that sits on top of this. Right? So we want to be able to make your life easier to build the cool stuff that your users really do care about. So also, we allow you to store data in real-time databases. Both real-time database and Cloud Firestore uh, allow you to store data, metadata for your applications. Uh, we allow you to host your web apps. So if we, if you can host your web apps with us for free, and then we provide you with a lot of cool things, SSL, and all of these other features that allow you to uh, allow users to come to your app, and you don't have to worry about serving them. It's a very serverless architecture. We allow you to test your app. You can upload your Android apps, and we will run them on a multitude of devices. We know there are a lot of Android devices out there. And so we'll run them across a multitude of devices, give you reports on when your app crashed, on what device, and we'll even give you a video of how your app performed and up until that crash. Uh, we can allow you to manage crashes with crash reporting. So if your app does crash, we allow you to um, view the stack trace. Right? Even in some cases, see some logs that led up to that crash. Analytics. So this brings us into the other pillar of Firebase. So the other pillar of Firebase is for you to grow your application. So you've already built your application with the features we had before. Now you want to grow your application. You want to take your application to the next level. You want to adjust your application as necessary based on how your users are using it. So analytics allows you to see how users are interacting with your application. Cloud messaging, it allows you to reach out to your app, to your users, re-engage them, get them back into your application. You can also send silent messages that can tell your application to do things while it's in the background. Remote config allows you to deliver different types of experiences to your users. If you have a group of users that are really big spenders in your app, and some other users that have not used your app in a long time, you can give them different experiences. Dynamic links. This is one of our cool features that is very easy to use. You make a link to your app, and then if that link is shared on Facebook, and someone clicks on it on an Android device, they go to the Play Store. Someone clicks on it on a web browser, they go to your web app. If they click on it on an iOS device, they go to the App Store. It's a very flexible tool in order to share your application very easily. 
And then, of course, we have AdMob and AdWords that allow you to um, get your app out there and also make revenue from your app. So why Firebase? A lot of these features exist already in separate situations. So for me, one of the biggest reasons why you would use Firebase is the integration, the interoperability of these features. So it's not just that we have authentication, but we have things like database understanding authentication so that if I want to do something in database, I can restrict it based on the user that is trying to do the operation. I can restrict writes and reads based on who that user is. Uh, A-B testing understands remote config. So if I have an A-B test, that I, an experiment I want to run, I can send it to one group of users and another group of users, different experiences, using, a, using remote config with A-B testing. So they, they work together. And then we have crash reporting that understands analytics. So when I get a crash, I can have logs in my crash report that tells me what the user was doing just before that crash occurred. So that interoperability of all of the features in Firebase, and there are more of them, but the interoperability is what I really think brings, gives Firebase a really um, strong impact on your applications. So that brings us to Firestore. And Firestore is Google's next generation cloud database. Um, it's a real-time, scalable um, client and server database. So it's not just for the client side, it's not just for the server side, you can use it in, in, in all of these areas. So you might ask yourself, doesn't Firebase already have a database? And the answer is yes. But Firestore is hoping to take, pick up where the real-time database started and move forward a, a bit. Um, it's flexible, so you have the SDKs that you would expect on Android, iOS, and web, but you also have support for a lot of server-side languages, up to 10 of them. So if it's Node.js, Go, uh, Java, Python, you will be supported there. It has expressive querying, so you can do compound queries that we'll see in a moment. It's still real-time, like the real-time database, so you get callbacks when data changes and you can take, um, you can update your app as a result. And then it's also available with massive scale. So if your app gets featured somewhere, you go from 10 users to 10 million users, you should be Okay. I want to note, though, that there are still some cases in which you would want to use the real-time database. If latency is a feature or a requirement of your application, the real-time database is still something that you should look at. So if you really need that low latency, as low as possible, then real-time database is still something to consider. But I would suggest you start with Firestore, and then only if Firestore is not able to meet your latency requirements, then go back to real-time database. So, what does Firestore look like? So, this is an example of when I ran the code lab. This is what the Firestore uh, data UI looks like. And so, here we have uh, some collections. So, you see we have restaurants here as the collection. And basically, Firestore is built on this model. We have collections, and then we have documents in those collections. And then you can have sub-collections, and you can see how that can go on and on. So, data goes into documents, and then documents go into, go into collections. Every top level data store database starts with a collection. So just like this one, we have restaurants. Every database, every Firestore database is gonna start in a similar way. And then within the restaurants database, um, you have all of these individual documents, and each one would represent a restaurant. Then the details of each restaurant would be set in fields. So these fields, things like the average rating of the restaurant, the category of the restaurant, the city that the restaurant is in, and things like that, they will be set in the fields of a document. And then here we have the ratings for each restaurant in a sub-collection. So this is a collection within a document. And so you can see how this can go on and on. So each rating within that, that rating sub-collection would also have documents, would also be in documents and will have fields just as restaurants do. So, one of the main things that Firestore gives us moving forward from real-time database is expressive querying. So we can do simple and compound querying, and we can get real-time updates on those queries. So, 
if we look at this, this is a simple query that we're doing. And in the first line there, we're getting a reference to the city's collection. And then in the next stage, we're going to apply a, a where clause that filters the state of those cities based on whatever the state value is. So in this case, it's CA, which represents California. So then we can go even further. And we, in this case, we do also grab the city's reference. But then at the end here, you can see that we added a, a compound query, a compound where clause that tells us that we're only looking for cities in California with a population of more than a million. And that brings us to our code lab Fire Eats. So let's go through some of how uh, Firestore is implemented in Fire Eats. In Friendly Eats, sorry. So Friendly Eats is available on three platforms, Android, iOS, and web, like most of the Firebase uh, features and samples. So you can go to our GitHub page there, and you go to Friendly Eats, iOS, Friendly Eats, Android, or Friendly Eats web. We're going to focus on Friendly Eats web today. And today we're going to be using the CLI, the Firebase command line interface. We're going to use authentication, and we're going to use a cool feature of authentication, which is anonymous auth. Um, a lot of times when you go to build an app, authentication is something that you want to implement, but can, but can sometimes be a blocker to getting you to what you really want to do. And so with the Firebase real-time database and Firestore, you can set up your rules or your security rules on your database where the user must be signed in. But then you don't want to have to go through the sign-in flow to sign in with Facebook or sign in with Google or anything like that. You can just use anonymous auth. And, and we'll see that in the code lab. An anonymous auth allows you to have your database open to everyone on your team without having it open to everyone in the world. And then obviously we're going to use Cloud Firestore. So Friendly Eats is a simple application that allows us to add restaurants and reviews and display feature, display uh, filtered price, display restaurants based on filtered prices, location, or ratings. So this is the UI that we should expect to get at the end. So we should have a nice UI which is already done for you in the code lab. And the, all of the, um, the restaurants, the UI for the restaurants, all that is built in. So what we're going to be focusing on is how do we get those restaurants into Firestore, get them out of Firestore, and then how do we filter based on the, criteria, based on the fields of a particular restaurant. So this is how we're going to add restaurants. So in this case, we basically get a reference to the restaurant's collection, and then we simply call add. And what are we adding? We're adding a data, a data object. And that data object can be any, any JavaScript object in this case. Um, so you don't have to explicitly create a document. You simply have to uh, have an object, you add it, and then the document is created implicitly for you. So in this case, the data object here will be a restaurant with all of the restaurant fields filled in. So let's query some restaurants. And to query some restaurants, we would basically get the same collection, the same restaurant's collection, and add some additional things like order by or limit. So in this case, um, we are querying all of the restaurants in descending order of average rating. So we get the top 50 restaurants in this case. So let's listen for updates to our collection of restaurants. So in this case, um, let's see what we do first. So we would call on snapshot on our query. So once we have on snapshot on the query, we would be able to get updates. And those updates could be of three types. They could be a change update, a delete update, or an added update. And in this case, we're looking for the added update. So once we know that it is an added update, we call render, which in our case just adds it to our UI. And then we can do compound queries. So in this case, we have restaurants. We get that collection at the top, as we've done before. And then we look at our filters from our UI. 
So if our filters from our UI for categories is not any, so that means that the user has specified some type of category filter, we simply add that to our query. And then so for our city, we do the same thing. And then for all of the other fields that we want to query on, we can do the same thing. And that's it. So let's see if we can get to the code lab now. Um, for this code lab, you will need Node.js. That is really the only thing that you should need. Other than that, you should be fine. And the code lab is at this short URL. But um, if you go to uh, the GitHub page, uh, github.com slash Firebase slash friendly eats dash web, you should be able to get it as well. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. And I'll be around. <laughs>